Hello, I'm Otter, and welcome back to Balance Challenge. So, as you can see, since the last time we talked, I have done quite a bit more, even since the end of the last video. Uh, most of it ended up being done off camera. For example, this space is much bigger. I also rescued a couple more of my dwarves. They were stuck on the surface, and you know, that, that was bad. So, they're much happier now. We were going to be setting this area up as a bunch of workstations for my dwarves. But on my way down to bedrock, I found a giant lush cave, which would make it a lot easier to expand, but I don't have the gear for that yet. So we've decided to focus on getting me geared up with proper enchanted dwarven armor and weapons. I've already got a bow, actually. My Fletcher friend has been working away to make me some lovely new equipment, but the rest, not quite there yet. We're working on it. Anyways, we're going to get geared up, we're going to explore the cave, and we'll see what happens after that. We have an enchanting table. But we don't have enough bookcases yet to make it actually work. So I do have a librarian friend that I managed to find who actually has the ability to give me books uh, for Unbreaking 3, which is pretty good. Uh, but he also knows how to make bookcases. I just need to supply him with resources. So back in this area, I'm going to set up a very basic enchanting area. We're going to move it downstairs later when we start building out a real home for our dwarves down there. But in the meantime, this should help me start getting some enchantments on some of my gear. efficiency and unbreaking we already have an unbreaking three on this pickaxe our librarian friend got us that so still fortune one efficiency two unbreaking three i will take that that's much better oh what should we call this pickaxe i'm gonna call it money bags I actually almost always end up naming my pickaxes in particular because I like to know the difference just by looking at it, whether it's Fortune or Silk Touch. So the Fortune ones get names like this. Silk Touch ones get random other names that imply some sort of smoothness. I don't know. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. It only has to make sense to me. Right? Right. All right, now that we have the efficiency, unbreaking, and fortune pickaxe, I think it's time to get more diamonds. Because this is enough to get us a hat. I want more than just a hat. So, let's go mining.
we have protection helmet and the rest is just plain diamond armor and we have sharpness three on a diamond sword as well as an unbreaking two power two bow so we are in pretty good shape i think it's time to be brave let's go clear out that cavern i had already explored a cave that i found earlier in the mid levels basically right at iron level here so y15 we go this way there's a cave that i already went and bravely explored and by bravely i mean of course that i crept very slowly around because i am afraid of everything but still Oh, hello. I think this was the only part of this cave that I hadn't actually explored. And it had a zombie spawner. Cool. Okay. I already see a spider over there. I wonder if I can shoot it through this. Probably not. Oh, well. So there's a couple skelly bubs. I'm going to torch the heck out of this area. <gasps> I see calcite. That means there's an amethyst here. I turned the brightness up so high so that, you know, things would actually show up in the video that I can't tell what's lit and what's not. So I think I am going to actually use mini HUD just to see if there's any spaces that are spawnable. Like these ones, but I knew they were spawnable. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Ooh. See, this is why I wanted mini HUD. I didn't know that those were still spawnable. And I do not want to let my fellow dwarves down here when monsters can still eat their faces. We dwarves have a religious prohibition against having our faces eaten. So this would be pretty easy to wall off if I wanted. I don't know that I necessarily want to go that route, but... Hello, diamonds. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And after seeing how big the caverns were and discussing with the dwarves, we decided to start by building a temporary wall here to protect the entrance area. We'll expand farther into the caves incrementally over time. Something you may not know about dwarves is our love of amethyst. 
It's certainly a useful material. We make heavy use of tinted glass in our mob farms, as well as using the crystals for mechanisms and even lighting. But to be honest, we mostly just think it looks pretty. And having a living geode like this as part of a dwarven keep is great for morale. Being chosen to prepare the geode and harvest the amethyst is a tremendous honor in dwarven culture, and I'm thrilled to have been chosen by the clan to do that work here. This next step was something I did as a gift for the rest of the clan. You see, dwarves build things a little differently based on whether it's a temporary construction, a work area, or a true home. It's going to take time to establish a proper keep, but the staircase leading down to the cavern was something I knew I could tackle quickly and bring up to a basic standard of workmanship. It's certainly not finished, but taking the extra time means that to the dwarves, this will feel like home instead of just another temporary shelter. These dwarves have been through a lot, and putting in the extra effort here is going to help them. Stairs completed, it was time to get back to more functional projects clearing out more of the cavern so the clan has space to work. Nothing super fancy here, just a bit of standard dwarven mining. Eventually this area will be made into something grand, but for now it's going to be mostly just a functional space. The clan has decided that the best course of action would be to move down here immediately, and get a feel for the space before deciding on even the initial work areas. That means we only have two more things to do before moving the clan down here. First is to build a little wall at the natural choke point we found earlier, and the second is to build a proper formal entrance to the keep. plan is finally ready to move into our new keep. This may look to human eyes like I'm kidnapping these dwarves, but what's really happening is that I'm honoring them by giving them a ride using the ancient dwarven custom of cave boating. As you can see, the clan is settling in nicely down here. A few of the members decided to remain upstairs for a while to tend the farms and be ready to welcome any more dwarves who might show up. And the rest of us have moved down here to start getting ready to expand the keep. One last thing before we wrap up the video. We've got a lot of options for what to tackle next and the dwarves asked me to ask you all what you think. I happen to know that there's a skelly spawner nearby and we could really use the bone meal, so perhaps a skelly farm. Or maybe it's time to dig a tunnel south through the mountains so we can pop up to the surface some night to grab some sheep and maybe even some cows. Maybe I need to be brave again and get into the nether? Or maybe we need to do some more building here in the keep to get it looking a little more homey. Let me know what you think we should tackle next in the comments. We'd love the feedback. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day and look after yourselves. Bye.